Hey guys, my name is Lex, and today I will be doing what my version of a TBR will be. So as of late, I've been in this huge reading slump. Every time I pick up a book, I... I don't know, I just can't get into it. It's been really frustrating, because I love to read, it's usually my escape. And typically I have like my favorite books that I pick up again, uh, just to get me out of the reading slump, and even that hasn't worked. So what I've been doing, instead of just reading the back of the book and deciding, oh yeah, let me try to force myself to read this, even though it's kind of mediocre, I'm going to start reading about the first 30 pages or so and doing kind of a TBR 30 page review on that. So I'm hoping to be able to pick a theme or kind of like a topic for each month. And for March, I picked the creepy thriller mystery genre because that's my favorite it's probably what most of the themes will end up being and originally i had picked up about five mystery thriller novels to go through i actually only got through three because on my third one i could not put the book down um so those three books will be a knife in the fog by bradley harper uh the assassin's game by christy mckay and verity by colleen hoover the first book that I'll be telling you about today was The Knife in the Fog. Now, think Sherlock Holmes investigating Jack the Ripper murders. It's pretty much what it is. The book opens up in 1888 where Dr. Doyle, who is a physician but also the author of the Sherlock Holmes books, um, gets invited by the Prime Minister to London. Um, it's very secretive, it doesn't really give a lot, except for the fact that he will be paid like 10 pounds per day or something very similar to that. If he just makes a trip out to London and kind of inquires what it is that they need to speak with him about. So once he gets there, he learns that um, they're actually trying to hire Sherlock Holmes to investigate the Whitechapel murders. Uh, the Prime Minister isn't there, it is actually his agent who is there, his name is Jonathan Wilkes or Wilson or something. I'm so sorry. I'm so bad with names. Anyways, and so uh, Jonathan asks Dr. Doyle if he would, you know, consider investigating these murders, which at the time are actually called the Whitechapel murders. And of course Dr. Doyle says no because Sherlock Holmes is based off of his professor and he just writes the novels. And so what Jonathan says is that he should reach out to his professor because he still wants Dr. Doyle and hopefully the professor to join teams to start investigating the murders. And that's kind of where we left off. Um, we know that the professor says yes, even though Dr. Doyle was hoping that he would say no. It does seem very intriguing, so hopefully I will finish this um, whenever I get time and then hopefully I can film a full review for you guys. Now the second book was The Assassin Game. I'm just going to read the back of it for you just so you can get like a feel. So it says, Tag you're it. It's 4 a.m. when they come for me. I am already awake, strung out on the fear that they will come and the fear that they won't. When I finally hear the click of the latch on my dormitory door, I only have a second to brace myself before... And then it breaks off. <laughs> it says, At Kate's isolated boarding school, killer is more than a game. It's an elite secret society. Members must avoid being killed during a series of thrilling pranks, and only the game master knows who the killer is. When Kate's invited to join the Assassin's Guild, she knows it's her ticket to finally feeling like she belongs. But when the game becomes all too real, the school threatens to shut it down. Kate will do anything to keep playing and save the guild. But can she find the real assassin before she gets killed herself? Dun dun dun! Okay. So, um, I should have mentioned this before, um, obviously anything within the first 30 pages is fair game for me to reveal, so if you don't like spoilers at all, um, I suggest clicking on this video. Sorry for not saying that earlier. Now, I read a couple reviews on Goodreads, as I usually do before I pick up a book, and most of them were very positive reviews. But I have to say that I don't think that I was the target audience for this. I think if I was in high school, I may have liked it better. But a lot of it is drama and kind of um, kid-like. And I guess I should have guessed that by, you know, her still being in high school. <laughs> that was my bad. But yeah, um, I think the book in the first 30 pages focuses on all the wrong aspects of what the book is about. 
and that frustrates me it doesn't grab my attention as much as like a knife in the fog did so i have to say i'm not too intrigued but um let me just tell you what happens in the first 30 pages Kate obviously gets taken by the guild. It's kind of like a fraternity where uh, it's like the initiation that Kate and two of her classmates are tied to what I'm guessing is like a drama stage. I don't know if she just didn't describe it that well or if it's just not that memorable that I just can't remember it. Um, but yes, I think they're tied to like a drama stage with like a bungee cord or something like, like that that has like a little bit slack but not a lot. And they have to roll around in cow manure to retrieve these scissors that will cut them out. And then they have to clean up the entire mess before anyone wakes up. I would have given up. <laughs> There's no way that I would be doing that. But I should have guessed by the fact that the back of the book states that uh, Kate is willing for people to get killed for her to stay in this guild. Um, that she would also be willing to, you know, roll around in cow manure. I guess those things correlate, right? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, like I said, uh, the first 30 pages weren't intriguing because the author pretty much just wanted to set up for some cheesy romantic love connections with a douchebag and the friend's own best friend. Um, if I do end up finishing this because I don't want to DNF it off the first 30 pages, but if I do, I really hope that there isn't going to be a romance in this book. I hope that it is just the plot and that this is all just, I don't know, just stuff that's not important that she's saying right now. But if it is, the second that she starts dating Alex, which is the games master who is a dick, I will definitely be dating that thing in. Just, you know, warning y'all now. Okay, so, um, now to the third and final book, which was Verity by Colleen Hoover. And yes, this is the book that got me out of my reading slump. The second that I finished it, I wanted to pick up another book, any book, just to read it because I loved Verity so much. So I finished it within, I want to say like a seven hour span, something um, that I typically don't do. But I started reading it around like 11 p.m. I fell asleep around like 1.30 or 2. And then the second that I woke up the next morning, I kept reading until I finished it. So I don't want to spoil it too much because even within the first 30 pages, I do feel like there were a lot of spoilers. So I was just going to give you guys a quick synopsis. I hope that you go out, you read it because on Amazon Kindle, I think it right now it's like free or it's like $2. It's very cheap and um, the story is very gripping. So I hope that you guys will read it and then come back for my book talk. And I will definitely be recording one. But anyways. <laughs> Verity is about a best-selling author. Within the course of, I believe, like one year, she loses both of her twin daughters and she gets in a horrible car accident that causes her to no longer be able to finish her best-selling book series. Right now, I think she was on like book five, whenever the book starts. Um, and so then her husband, Jeremy, hires the main character, Lowen, to finish the book series for her. Now, with that being said, because of these tragedies happened within a year, Lone's very worried about taking the job because even though it is, I think, like a quarter of a million or a half a million dollars, um, she would have to stay in their mansion to go over Verity's notes and to finish the book. And even though it's kind of enticing to her because she did just get an eviction notice, it is also very creepy that, you know, she lost one daughter, two daughters, and then herself. Um, so Lowen kind of thinks that there might be foul play, but in the beginning she actually started to develop a crush on Jeremy, the husband. Don't even get me started on that because I hated that part. So with that little crush, she ends up trusting Jeremy and moving into this big mansion. And I guess all I can really say is what actually happened is 10 times worse than what Lowen could have ever even thought had happened. So like I said, please, please, please go get it. I would love... Um, to hear your guys' thoughts on it once I review it. Anyways, um, I hope that you liked my version of a TBR. Um, it does give you a little bit more insight into the book without actually having to buy the book yet, without having too many spoilers. So um, I think that'll be it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Bye.